are no longer here. And out of respect for those people at this time, I'd like to read the names of our classmates who have passed on. I have uh, pictures of them and everything. I'll pass out to everybody. I'll read their names in, in the names that we knew when they were in school in no particular order. We remember Jimmy Riker, Bill Reed. Oh, go slowly. Yeah. Okay, Jim Riker. I'm going to give you a list. Bill Reed, Emil Nas, Kenny Pond, Wade Hindenburg, Doug Mayer, Bob and Lindsay, Linda Mori, Evelyn Littlehead, Sharon Olson, Jim Stone, Dick Handred, Dean Dillon, Daryl Deck, Malcolm Miller, Sharon Neurotic, Vicki Boyson, Neil Bauman, Bernard Weeks, Rita Mae Brown, Terry Kuhn, Fred Clemo, and Margie Squires. These people preceded us in passing, and I'd like to pause just for a moment to remember them. Thank you. Now onward, it was 50 years ago, the class of 66, and most of us were roaming the halls of Wolf Point High School. 18,285 days have passed since that day. <laughs> we're getting old, at least physically. We remember, we remember filling up the tank in our car at the triangle service station for five bucks, going to Brown's Drive-In and getting a pizza burger, sneaking friends in the trunk of a car and going to the Sundown Drive-In. I remember every day, clearly. <laughs> Like it was yesterday. Yeah. We remember the White Star Laundry, the Tasty Freeze, the Golden yeah. Arrow Motel, the Triangle Service Cafe and Station, the Tip Top Motel, the Husky Truck Stop, and who could forget the Grand Old Sherman Hotel. Wolf Point was a booming town back in the 60s with plenty of businesses and a great place to grow up. We didn't have the internet, Facebook, or computers. We went outside to play. If we were thirsty, we turned on the hose at the nearest neighbor's house and had a drink. We lived before seat belts in houses with leaded paint. Rode to beat, to beat hell in the backs of pickups going down a gravel road. Didn't have helmets for our bicycles and we survived. <laughs> Off and on, most of us have probably done an unsavory thing or two. We've probably been in trouble once. Yeah. One time or another. Yeah, Who amongst us hasn't lit a 1,000 pack of black cat fireworks and thrown it down Ralph Wooden's bull hall? <laughs> Most of us got married, had kids, and if that happened, we're likely grandparents right now. Grandkids are wonderful, you know, because you can spoil them and then give them back. We were probably born in 48 with a few exceptions when you could buy a gallon of gas for 16 cents, a new car was 1250 bucks, a new house for $7,750, and now $7,750 will pay for a month at the rest home. Lots of us have not been home, fortunately kept in touch thanks to this thing called the internet. I gave Merlin Cameron a call the other day. A lot of, almost, almost all of us remember Merlin. He wrote a letter and asked me to read it to the classmates. So for you wondering what merlin has been up to the last 50 years, here it is. It's large print and double space so I can read it. <laughs> Class of 66, I hope this letter finds all to be well with you and that your life has flourished. Hi, this is Merlin, an old classmate of yours. My family left Wolf Point the second semester of my sophomore year. I'll never forget driving to my new school in Billings, knowing there were 2,100 students at that facility. Wow, what a shocker. This school is bigger than Wolf Point. Nonetheless, didn't take long to assimilate into the culture of West High. Merlin says, I lost my father to cancer in 65, and that really left a void in my heart. After graduation, I went to college for a short period of time, only to find out I had no idea what the hell I was even doing here. I thought it was a good life. I remember one morning waking up at Quebec, Vietnam. I'd enlisted in the Navy thinking I might go on a Mediterranean cruise. Oh yeah, there was a war going on. I ended up with the 3rd Marine Division, three and a half miles south of the DMV, and it was DMZ, the militarized zone, and it was incredibly hard hit base. I volunteered for this assignment as it was the beginning of the Navy Special Warfare, and I was honored to be at the forefront of this endeavor. We made river runs to Dong Ha with armaments, men, and supplies, and eventually went to the number one hardest hit base of the 10th Offensive in 1968. The reason I'm leaving the name out, quote, 
is to see if you can remember what the name of the base was that was hardest under siege for 90 days. By the way, we were the number two hardest hit base of that offensive. March 10, 1968, I was wounded by enemy fire, which caused an ex incredible explosion of munitions and aviation fuel that was earmarked to go up river. I was patched up and reported to the medic that my neck was certainly a problem. That'd be fine. Walk and load and let's go. I spent half of 67 and all of 68 of the first few months of 69 in Vietnam, and it was time to go home. I took my discharge and returned to Billings. Employment wasn't all that plentiful. It took a while to get a job, and I ended up working in a shoe store. But I'm going to tell you a funny little story before I go on. Merlin says myself and two of my friends were at the Billings Fair on a hot August night. While we were walking around the midway, we ran into three girls, which we spent the evening with, just enjoying that night. One of the girls was named Donna. And I asked her out on a date for the next <laughs> evening. We decided to go to a country western concert at the fairgrounds. It was almost over, maybe five minutes to go, and I suggested we beat the crowd out of the old rickety stadium. As we were going down the steps, they started the fireworks display, and as usual, the first few were salutes, lower, sounded like artillery fire. I grabbed Donna, threw her down the steps, yelled, Incoming! Yes, that was a fun word. When we were taking fire, as people behind us were doing everything they could to keep from falling over us. Once things settled down, I looked at Donna, and she had the most astonishing look on her face. I picked her up, we calmly walked out on the way to taking her home. I explained to her I had just recently returned home from Vietnam. I guess that all went well even after that fiasco because we got married and that was 46 years ago. Back to the shoe business. What I thought was going to be temporary employment until I found something better became a career. I started off in the stock room, worked my way up to middle management. Then the next move was running a series of retail stores. I guess I built a good reputation and was recruited by a company called Famolari as a casual woman's shoe manufacturer. This continued to open more doors within the industry, and I became a shoe stylist for other companies and selling a product to major department stores from New York to Hawaii. Talk about working your ass off in an airplane four to five times a week got old after a while, but it had its perks. It had its perks. We traveled in limos and took our clients out to the finest restaurants in their cities. We were kind of considered the big dogs in the show world. That was kind of neat. Then my dream job was handed to me at a convention in Las Vegas. That being building a complete line of shoes seasonally influenced for a major company. <coughs> now comes the hard part. I mentioned earlier about being wounded in Vietnam, which had taken a hold of my life. I was in so much pain I just couldn't go anymore. I turned down the opportunity that I so wanted because I knew my health would not allow me to take on that hectic lifestyle of traveling the world shoe factories and do this job correctly. I fought with a VA lawyer for 13 years to get compensated and to be put on disability. The main reason why I'm not with you today is that I'm recovering from my seventh neck surgery. That surgery was eight, and a half, eight hours long with a four and a half hours in ICU and I almost didn't make it up. I have severe nerve damage of the root nerves coming out of my spinal cord which has just raised havoc with the right side of my upper body. He says he's in physical therapy two to three times a week and making good strides. He said there was just no way I could travel to Wolf Point to see you guys. My wife and I were so looking forward to this reunion to see where I grew up and also to go see the homestead where I raised. He still has 1,300 acres of mineral rights on the land. But we all know where the oil industry is today. He goes on to say, life does bring its blessings. I'm still married to that wonderful wife I threw down the stairwell at Billy's. We have three kids, two boys and a girl. Along with that came six grandkids. Wasn't always easy for us parents, and I personally take a great deal of responsibility for some of the difficult times. As I was building my career, we made eight interstate moves in 12 years. Each one of the kids at different times of their life really rebelled with the prospect of having to start their life all over again. You see, I was gone a lot, and way too much got dumped on Donna's shoulders. If I had to do it over again, I honestly can't tell you if I would have taken a different path or still navigated the course I was on. Donna was thrown into the workforce when my health failed. Fortunately, our kids were pretty much grown at that time, although this nightmare for me started about 20 years ago. Without Donna's health and the great insurance she gleaned from her company, it could have been bad news to be stuck in the VA medical system. Today, I'm a 100% disabled veteran and have been this way for some time. I always had this thing about fast cars, and I'm right in the middle of building another one, which will probably be my last. I had to recruit the help of other people to do the heavy lifting, as I just cannot do it. <coughs> so what is the car? It's a 1967 Barracuda Notchback. My engine builder is one of the best in the country. We put a 408 stroker with somewhere between 5 to 550 horses. If I put a turbo on it, it would easily pull 800 horsepower. The car was completely stripped down and rebuilt from the bottom up with state-of-the-art components. 
It's taken forever because I have to keep stepping aside for another surgery and then a long drawn out rehab, but it's getting closer to completion. My original plan was to have it done and drive it to the reunion. Yeah. I guess we know how that turns out. When you start writing some of the events of your life, you try to stay focused on some of the highlights, and I know this letter has already gone on too long. However, I do want to wish my very, very best to you to let you know I do miss and love you. May God be with you and bless your every day. Uh, as you can see on the walls, courtesy of John Rotenberg and my laser printer, there's some old photos of us. And the one at the top right is we all remember Kid and Barrel. That's the teacher. Uh, Mike Swindon drove the that doctored that photo of us. Uh, another classmate. Now, if anybody would like to, I have a copy of the DVD for the reunion uh, in 2014. It's in Missoula. After what you're done eating, if you'd like to see it, or I can play it now. They gave us a really nice large screen TV to show this on. So. <laughs> This is just to see. But if you'd like to see it, it's right here. I'll set it up here and we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be glad to play it later on. My time is up. Is there anybody else that would like that? That wasn't bad. <laughs> anybody else here would like to say anything? Please stand up and do that. Please do. Please do. I put together the bios. And you know, today I looked through the bios and there's only about seven people that are here today that actually sent me bios. Really? Yes. So, but, the, um, I mean, no, I said that wrong. Only seven, only seven people in, that are here today actually sent in bios. The rest, the rest all came from email. Does that make sense? Yeah. So anyway, I have them and I'll distribute them out. Also, on that table, there's some notebooks and stuff I've assembled. You guys are free to look through them. Several people have asked me if I ever threw anything away. He's a hoarder. I have wolf point papers from, you know, and wolf talk, and there's some notebooks, and I hope you'll all take the time to go through them, you know, later and look at And I will be handing out the bios afterwards. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Thank you. I think we should thank all the people that, that uh, worked for me on the reunion. And I, I won't name names because I may miss somebody. But thank all of you for putting this together. You all know who you are. Thank you, David. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure.